Hey guys, Hero Clanks here. I recently heard that new Rocksteady wants to make a new Batman game because Suicide Squad Kill Justice League performed so badly. I can understand where they are coming from. Their version of Harley said it was their turn now, and they went on to lose over $200 million for WB. So I guess it's Batman's turn again. Well, he did put them on the map in the first place. Maybe we will finally get an Arkham Justice League game like I've always wanted. Anyway, there are two other DC-themed games that have come out recently, and I'd like to compare them to show off which one I like this new Batman game to be like. First is Gotham Knights, then there's Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Both have sweet baby involvement, so it stands to reason that they could go in either direction with this new game. Let's go over the similarities first. Both games are not well received, which is normal for Sweet Baby. Both games involve Batman, Batman's death and how everyone deals with it, and both games try to give tribute to Kevin Conroy, at least in some way. But the way they, they, they do these things, and other make, others make it very easy to tell which game I would rather this new game try to be like. But I want to explain why I think this way. First, let's compare the graphics of these games. Both look okay. Suicide Squad Suicide Squads looks better, but the graphics aren't as important as they once were. It's more about the next things we compare. Gameplay and story. Gotham Knights gameplay is the better of the two. It's not as good as the Arkham series or Arkham Origins, but at least it at least feels like it's related to those games. Suicide Squad's gameplay is functional. <clears throat> it's basically jumping and shooting. There are melee attacks, but they aren't the best things to use in the game. Jumping and shooting works better. And that is not very Arkham style. Then there's the stories. In Gotham Knights, Batman dies after an epic fight with someone who is physically ma who is a physical match for him. Maybe even more than a match, thanks to the Lazarus Pit magic in the game. Anyway, after the after the fight, both Bruce and Ray Shal Ghul make their way to the section of the Bat Cave where the, Goth the Gotham Knights suits and equipment are stored. Batman looks at them wistfully, like it's the last time he's going to see them. Mm. Right, Raish sees what's going on and starts to gloat. Mm. After I finish with you, I'll go after them. I will kill them one by one, and then the city will belong to the League of Shadows, or something like that. Mm. But man, mm, Batman looks at them, looks at him while pressing buttons on his gauntlet. I won't let that happen, he says, and as the entrances to the Batcave close and the bombs start going off all around him. With nothing left to say, these two DC patriarchs on different sides charge each other one last time, and... An explosion covers up what happens next. Eventually, the Gotham Knights, Batgirl, mm, Gotham Knights, Batgirl, Nightwing, Robin, and linebacker Red Hood make their way to the wreckage of the Batcave and find Batman and raise his bodies in the rubble. The rest of the story revolves around our heroes and even some villains dealing with Batman's death and continuing his legacy. You play as one, you playing as one of these of the, of the four characters available will fight crime and solve mysteries and ultimately save the city from two evil organizations. Mm. Yes, there were live service elements like leveling up and gathering gear, but still, you didn't need to do that much, you know, that that much to beat the story campaign. Suicide Squad is a far different story. Not only is the gameplay not as good, like I said before, but the live service aspect of the game also helps ruin it. There is so much grinding for levels, weapons, and other gear that has been called busy work the video game. But there is a way to get past all that. Pay the ridiculous amounts of money necessary to get in the stuff you want without grinding. Mm. Things like levels and skins can cost up to 20 plus dollars each. Mm. And yet, some skins aren't available for all the characters. One of the best skins in the game is the Wayne Tech Armor skin. Mm. Each character who gets it has a neon lines running down their bodies and they have cool white Batman look Batman like eyes. Mm. But guess what? Boomerang doesn't get that skin. Mm -mm, why not? Mm. He's part of the team. And all skins do is make your characters look cool. That's not worth. That's not worth it mm, for twenty dollars, twenty plus dollars. Mm. Then where? Mm, then there were the characters. At first, I thought only Deadshot was messed up. Mm. Uh, well, I got, uh, real. But after seeing how everyone in the game acts in the story multiple times, I realized that mo many of the characters are messed up here. Mm. This that is not the same Harley from the Arkham universe. That is not the same Deadshot. Mm. Arkham Batman would never get brainwashed like that. Wonder Woman was acting out of character, so was Joker, Mrs. Freeze, and now we have a truly fanfiction character with Lawless. It would not, I would not be surprised if they changed the last character, promised death, promised Deathstroke, mm. and who cares at this point? The story of this game was fanfiction from the very start. Mm. There is no way the members of the Suicide Squad that you play as stand a chance mm -hmm. against the members of the Justice League that are, they fight in the game, and yet they win. And spend the rest of the game grinding. Mm -hmm and fighting cheap Brainiac copies of the Justice League boss fights. After describing these two games, it's clear which one I want the new one to be, the new Rock City Batman game to be like.
I don't want to see Batman and friends jumping and shooting. If the combat is Gotham Knights level, that would at least be, feel more like an Arkham game. I'm here at Webcomics, and it's sad that mm, we have to settle for that nowadays. Mm.